Thank you so much, Michelini, for this intro. And church, I am so glad that I can come into your living rooms and share the Word of God. Are you ready to receive the Word of God this morning? Do you want to hear from God? Now, even though I cannot see you, I cannot hear you, I trust and I believe, and of course I hope, that you are ready to receive from God this morning because I believe that God wants to speak to your life in a very specific way. Now, I'm going to continue talking about the God we worship. And today I'm going to talk about the God of our past. Now, you and me, all of us, we have a past. Maybe you look back on your past and say, it was a good past. Or you look back and say, oh my goodness, I'm so glad that I am not there anymore, that I am at the place where I am today. But no matter if it was a good past or a bad past, we all have a past. And I want you to know that regardless of what might have happened, God is still in control. God still has that plan. He still has that purpose. He still has a destiny on your life. And if we include God into the picture, no matter what, it cannot hold us back. The past cannot hold us back. So we can really run with God and accomplish what he has for us this morning. So I want you to be of good cheer because God wants to lead us into a brighter future. Amen. I'm going to continue talking about the text of Joshua. Now we know that Joshua and the people of Israel they came out of the wilderness over the Jordan River, through the Jordan River, on dry ground, which was a miracle. Then they defeated Jericho because God gave very clear instructions of how to do it. So now they are uh, on the next battle, and that is where Joshua chapter 7 picks up, where now they are going against the city of Ai. See, now the people just came from a victory. They took Jericho. It was an awesome time. It was a good time. So they decided, you know what, you're going to take the next city, and that is I. So they sent spies to spy out the city, and they came back and said, you know what, we don't have to take so many people. Only 3,000 men. The other ones can stay back. But here's the thing. They never consulted with God. They never went to God and asked God to show them what to do, even though just before that, God showed them very clearly of how to take Jericho. Now they came to a place where they were so secure in their past that they said, we're just going to take the city, only 3,000 people. Now there was something happening because someone was guilty in the camp, and so God was not with them. So when they went up against the people, they killed 36 of the Israelites. And it says that their, their hearts were melting in fear. See, they came from a, from a victory and now they faced a defeat. They rectified the problem, which was a very uh, harsh punishment. But nevertheless, after that, God gave them more victories. We can learn from the stories that our past can keep us from succeeding in our today. Our past can hinder us of succeeding what we are doing today. Now, I'm going to give you an example. Only imagine I'm driving my car and I keep on looking in the back view mirror. Now, you might say if it only happens once in a while, it's good because then you see what cars are behind you. You know what's going on around you. But what if I would just keep on looking in my back view mirror and I constantly look and I don't even look ahead? What would happen? It's only a matter of time before I would crash, hurt myself or the people with me or around me or even in my car. See, if I am so focused on the past that I cannot even concentrate of what is happening right here, right now, ahead of me, I am getting so caught up in the past that I cannot accomplish anything right now. So we have to understand that our past experiences they might have been good, they might have been bad, but they can keep us from experience what God has for us today. And I want to pick up a few uh, major key verses from uh, Joshua chapter 7 where we can learn how the people of Israel responded to that and how God could bring about a change in their life so that they did not have to focus on the past, but that they can look to what God was doing right there and in their future. The first thing that we can learn from the story is that our past victories 
can keep us from succeeding today. Our past victories can keep us from succeeding today. Joshua 7, 3 and 4 says, When they returned to Joshua, they said, Not all the army will have to go up against Ai. Say, send two or three thousand men to take it, and do not worry the whole army, for only a few people live there. So about three thousand went up, but they were rooted by the man of Ai. See, we can see here that even our past victories can keep us from succeeding today. Because we have to understand that the Israelites just came from a victory. They just took the city of Jericho. So they were confident. They knew that God was working on them. They knew that God was working with them and powerfully giving them the victory. That's why they went into the next battle thinking that God is still with them. Everything is still okay. We can go in and we can take it. Don't even have to send the whole army. Only three or four thousand people is more than enough. See, here's the thing. They never went to God in prayer. They never asked God what they should be doing. Their thought from their past victory, you know what? We apply the same kind of principle, maybe not walking around any city walls because they didn't have any city walls anyway, but we come into this battle and we know that God will give us the victory. They were so confident, but they did not know that one of them was with fault, that one of them uh, sinned, and that's why God was not with them anymore. See, if they would have gone to God in prayer, God could have showed them, you know what, there's one among you who took things he was not supposed to take. Once that one is rectified, I will go with you into battle and you will win. But they were so confident, maybe because of their past victory, that they thought no need to even bother God. No need to even ask God. We know that we can have the victory. After all, we are going into the promised land. God promised us this land. So why wouldn't God give us this land? See, they never consulted with God. They never inquired from God what to do in this situation. And that became their downfall. Because they did not come to God in prayer, they didn't know that they would not have the victory in this coming battle. So I want to put it close to our heart that we cannot get so caught up with our past victories that we leave God out of the picture. That we are now so confident that I can provide for my family. I'm just going to do it. No, pray about it. Ask God to still bless you, to open up doors in front of you, that you can really walk in his blessing, that you can walk in the goodness of God. We have to involve God in our life. Don't be so secure in who you are, in your past victories, that now all of a sudden our focus is not on God anymore. Now, of course, I cannot say that God was not their focus. That would not be fair. That would be judgmental for me to say. But we can see in this instance that they went to the next battle and they did not pray about it. For whatever reason, maybe they were too busy. Maybe they were too excited. Maybe they just didn't think about it because they thought God gave us the land already. But I want you to know, even though we might be walking in blessing right now, even though we walk in the favor of God, don't exclude God from your everyday life. We have to include him so that he can direct our steps. In WhatsApp, I have a group with all my previous friends from the time I was in Germany and we're doing SPM. Now, not everyone is in there, but quite a lot of them are in that WhatsApp group. So usually it's pretty quiet, but once in a while, somebody will share a memory that we have, and then everybody starts to pitch in, talking about the good old times. Ever been there? Talking about the good old days, or oh, everything was better back then. But so we have that WhatsApp group, and then uh, people are talking so excitedly, and we have all good memories. But then later on, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting back and I'm thinking, you know what, we talked about that everything was so much better back then, 20 years ago. But you know what? Actually, we were struggling back then, studying for the test. 
I was struggling with my ad mats. I mean, at the beginning I was doing fine, but then later on, oh my goodness, I lost the train and I couldn't get back in. So the times back then wasn't always better, but sometimes we can get stuck in the past. Talking about the good old days, that everything was so good, everything was so much better. But I want you to know that we don't have to live in the past. We can live in the present because with God involved, he can lead us into a new thing, into new and exciting things that God wants to do in our life. Amen. So I want to challenge you not to look to the past, no matter if it was good, if you had an awesome time, because sometimes we, we glamorize our past. Everything was so much better back in the glory days, back in the good old days, when football was still football, when the politicians were not corrupt. Uh, <laughs> really? Was it really that much better in the past? I'm not sure. You tell me. But the thing is, sometimes we get st can get stuck in the past, in the good old days, that we can miss out on what God has for us today. So don't get stuck in the past, in the good old days, but reach out to for what God has for your life right here and right now. Because God has a work in your life and he is doing it if we only let him. So let's stretch out to God and say, God, become involved in my life again so that I can see you move right here and right now in, our, in my life, in your life. Amen. The second thing that we can learn from this story is that our past failures can keep us from succeeding today. Our past failures can keep us from succeeding today. See, in verse 7 it says, And Joshua said, Sovereign Lord, why did you ever bring these people across the Jordan to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? If only we had been content to stay on the other side of the Jordan. Now, I really feel for Joshua. I mean, put yourself into his shoes. They just came from a great victory. They saw God's powerful miracle. First of all, when they crossed the Jordan River, God parted it and they went over on dry ground. Then they took the city of Jericho, another great powerful miracle that God did. And now they came to a place where they were uh, where they had the defeat, where they did not manage to overcome the enemy. And now all of a sudden people were angry, I'm sure. I'm not, uh, the Bible doesn't really say anything, but only put yourself in their shoes. Of course, people were upset. Of course, people were angry. I mean, 36 people died. That means 36 families lost one of their loved ones. There was mourning, there was grief, there was anger, there was uh, probably an atmosphere where people did not understand it. Even says in the Bible that their hearts melted with fear. See, they were now afraid because of the victory, the, not the victory, sorry, the defeat that they just experienced in their life. And I am sure that's why Joshua responded in the way that he did. He went, to get, he went to God and said, God, why did this happen? We should have just stayed on the other side of the Jordan River. We should have just stayed in the wilderness. Now, just think about it. If you think back of Moses and the people, that is ex exactly what they did. They went into the wilderness and then things got a little bit tough. And they came to Moses and said, Moses, why did you lead us out of Egypt? We should have just stayed there. We should have just stayed in Egypt. See, because now it was a difficult situation. They thought, you know what? Hope is lost. What can God do now? We thought we are in the right place. We thought we are in the promised land. We thought we are doing everything right. And now all of a sudden we are having a defeat. All of a sudden, things don't work out in the way that we want them to work out. And I want you to know, if you are in a situation where things don't go your way, don't, don't decide in your heart that God is not with you. Because in this entire situation, even though it was the fault of Achan or Achan, is probably the, 
the pronunciation that they would have had. But even though it was the fault of one person, God was with them regardless. Now there was the consequences and they did not defeat the enemy because of that sin. But it doesn't mean that God left them. God was still with them even though they experienced defeat. That's why God could show them what went wrong and why it went wrong, how to rectify the situation so that in the future they would have the victory. See, God was still very much involved in the life of the people of Israel, but he needed to be involved. They needed to come to him and pray so that God could really show them what was the problem. See, but now they had a bad experience and the bad experience from the past can keep us from succeeding today. Because now they came to a point, they said, you know what, we just had a big defeat. What's even the point? Is it even the will of God that I am here? Maybe I should just settle down, maybe even go back over the Jordan River into the wilderness. They were willing to give up. But of course, right there in the scripture, it comes, there comes the switch, there comes the turnaround where Joshua then says, oh, no, 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 God, you are still with us. Let's go ahead and let's take this land. But see, if we are get stuck in our past experience, especially if it is defeat, if it is a mistake, if it is a failure, it is easy to let us, uh, let that track us down that we don't even want to try anything right now because we are still hurt, because we are still in pain of what happened in the past, because we can never really let loose of what happened in the past. A person really hurt me in the past. Pastor, you don't understand. I was so deeply hurt. I was cut to the bone. How can I come out of that? How can I forgive? How can I enjoy my life? Well, maybe for you it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. See, sometimes we believe where it says the saying that uh, time heals all wounds. Have you ever heard that one? Time heals all wounds. And I believe it is not completely true. Because I believe time will let you forget your wounds. Time will let you, uh, you know what? come to terms with the wounds that you had been inflicted on you in the past. But only God is the one who can heal your wounds. So if we are wounded in the past, don't wait and say, you know what, until I am healed, until I can forget, I won't do anything, I will just wait here. And then once I feel ready, I will step in and I will do again what God wants me to do. No, now is the time to come before God and say, God, Heal my wounds. God, mend my broken heart. God, make yourself real to me so that I can forgive, that I can leave behind what was in the past and that was so hurtful so that I can stretch out what you have for me in the future. Don't be so focused on the past that you cannot experience God in your today. Come on, church, because the danger is real. Because if we don't let God heal us, we will always have something in our life that is holding us back. You know, last time I went to Germany, I went for my cousin's wedding, so I went alone. But I went to meet up with some friends. And I, I met this guy who was a good friend of mine when I was still living in Germany. Now it's many, many years ago. But you know what? He was the cool kid. He was the awesome kid that all the guys looked up to. He was the guy that all the girls would like to be with, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so he was the one who was so cool. He was the one who was driving a nice sports car. He was the one who seemed to have it all together. He had a job. He was doing well. He had uh, money. He had the looks. Everything was going in his favor, right? But then he liked one girl and the girl liked him. But they became a couple. But the thing is, he prayed and prayed, God, is this really the right person or not? 
And I'm not saying that you shouldn't pray because you definitely, definitely should pray and see if the person that you are about to get into a relationship with, that that is the person that God has for you. But here's the thing. He went over it in his mind over and over again. And he second, uh, he doubted and then he second guessed himself. And you know what? Sooner or later, which was actually quite a long time, the girl got fed up and just dumped him and moved on. And now this lady is married with children, awesome husband, lovely family, awesome people. And when I saw him 20 years later, he is still living in the past. What could have, if only, regret that he missed his chance, that he uh, missed out on that opportunity because he just wasn't sure, because he couldn't make up his mind. So I do believe that there is a time frame that we have. And if we miss that opportunity, maybe that opportunity will never come again. But there's no point in living in the past. You know, the saying goes, no point in crying over spilled milk. It's past. It's gone. You cannot change it anymore. But what you can do now is take control of your today. So don't let the past, the failures of the past, the missed opportunities of the past keep you from experiencing and doing something for God in your today. Because God is still involved in your life. No matter what had happened in the past, God can still use you. God can still lead you. God still wants to be involved in your life and lead you to a better future. Come on. Isn't that what we put our hope and our trust in? That God has a good plan and a good purpose for us? That he has plans to prosper us and not to harm us? Isn't that what we put our trust in? To say, God, no matter how bad my past might have been, I know that there's better things ahead. So don't get so focused on the past that you cannot enjoy your today. Maybe it is time to forgive. Maybe there was difficult times in your past that was not caused by you, but maybe somebody else hurt you. Maybe somebody else abused you. Maybe somebody else bullied you. Maybe somebody else did something to you that hurt you to your core. And you are still struggling with letting that go. You are still struggling, enjoying your today because of what that person has done to you in the past. But pastor, how do I know that I still need to forgive? If you think about that person and it still hurts you, you need to forgive. If you think about what happened in the past and you get all broken again, and you feel that pain come in a wave, like overwhelming you again, it's time to let go. That is the Holy Spirit putting his finger right now on the past experience, saying, you know what? Whatever happened in the past, let it go. Whatever hurt you so deeply in the past, just bring it to God. Bring it before him and say, God, I have been so hurt. I cannot even enjoy my today because of my past. But God, you can heal my wounds. God, you can make yourself real in my life so that I can overcome this burden, overcome this pain, that I can overcome this unforgiveness, that I can overcome this depression, that I can overcome whatever is holding me back. See, God wants to be involved in your life. God wants to show himself triumphantly in your life. So that we can go from being a victim to becoming a victor. That we can have a victorious life. That we can go from being hopeless to becoming hopeful again. That God can lead us through this difficult time into a better future. Amen. So even though the people of Israel had now to deal with the defeat in their past, just then they had the defeat, but they had to make up their mind and say, you know what, we're going to make it right and expect God to lead us 
into a better future. In the same way, we have to come to God and say, God, lead me into a better tomorrow so that the the past will not hold me back. Past failures, past mistakes, past that was unpleasant and hurtful, that that cannot hold me back anymore, but that I can go with God into a brighter future. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. The third thing that we can learn from the story is that our past needs to be dealt with so that we can succeed today. Our past needs to be dealt with so that we can succeed today. Verse 23 says, They took the things from the tent, brought them to Joshua and all the Israelites, and spread them out before the Lord. Now, those of us who are familiar with the story know that the consequences was very severe. But the hope that we have is that in our life, the consequences that we have to face will not be so severe. But here's the good news. The good news is that God is doing something new. Isaiah 43 verse 19 says, See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Now you see where it says the phrase, now it springs up. It doesn't refer to an instant work. It doesn't say it happens overnight. But the original word that they use is disma. Disma. And it means to sprout, to grow, to coming into maturity. So where it says that God is doing something new, does not necessarily mean that it has happened in an instant, that we can say, God, do something, and then we expect it to happen right there and then. Sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes it's like a plant that is sprouting, and then it's starting to grow, and then it grows into majority, and then only will you start to see the fruit. Remember I talked about planting good seeds so that you have a good harvest? The plan that God is doing something in your life, the new thing, might be already in the process of growing. But maybe we don't see the fruit right now, but we know that God is true to his word. That he is doing something new and that he can give you a new beginning. Not only a second chance, but he is giving you a new beginning. And that is so wonderful to know. Because God is the God who is doing something new. And I want you to know, no matter what you are, in what stage of life you are in right now, God wants to make himself real to you. Maybe you are here for the first time. Maybe somebody sent you the link and you just clicked on it and now you are here in our service. Maybe your girlfriend made you come and watch <laughs> watch this with you. I don't know. But I want you to know that you are not here by mistake. You are not here by chance, but God has an appointment with you. That he wants to speak to you in a very awesome, very clear way. And I want to encourage you to really go to God and say, God, what if I could experience you? What if God is actually real? What if I could experience God so that I can leave behind my hurtful past and see God move in my life? What if? I want you to know that God is waiting for you. He is waiting for you to respond to him. Or maybe you are here and you are a Christian for many years. Maybe you have been even part of this church for many, many years. I also want you to know that God has so much more in store for you. That you can let go of my still hurt from the past. Because God is doing something new. See, but the thing is, the, the past has to be dealt with. Like I earlier said, where sometimes we say time heals all wounds. I don't believe that is accurate. We have to let God help us deal with our past so that we can move on. Come on. I believe we have to get God involved in our life. 
so that we can deal with our past. Not just say, okay, I, I just don't think about it. I will just leave it behind me. I'm just not going to look back. I'm just going to look ahead. Well, there might be a time when something happens. And if you like it or not, you will remember. And you will be brought right back to when it happened. And the pain can be just as severe 20 years after it first happened. Come on, I talk to people who were abused at chill, uh, when they were children at a young age. They, they said sometimes they, they lived a normal life. They couldn't even remember it. But once they got triggered, something happened and it brought them right back. And all that hurt, all that pain, all that suffering came back and almost breaks them right there in their today. So I believe we have to deal with our past so that we can let, let go of it. Now, it doesn't mean that we really forget, that we will never ever remember, but we will take away the place of influence on our life. That when we uh, think back of what happened, that we don't get hurt all over again, but that we have our peace over it. That we can say, you know what? God has brought me out of it. It was painful. It was hurtful. It was something that I would never wish on anyone. But God has brought me through. And that's why I can now walk into my today. That's why I can look forward into a greater future. We have to deal with what has happened in the past so that we can experience God's fullness in our today. So don't sweep it under the rug. Don't just say, you know what, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm just not going to do anything about it. No, come to God. And the door of God's presence is wide open. You can come to God right where you are this morning and God will hear you. God can respond to you and God can give you healing over past hurts. So I want to invite the worship team to come back. And we sing the song again and we're going to really pray and respond to God in prayer so that He can do something powerful, powerful in our life. Amen. Come on, let's just rise to our feet and take a little bit of time to really respond to God. Amen. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Oh, nothing but the Father, we are so thankful that you are working in our life this morning. I thank you that we can respond to you, come to you, knowing that you will lead us out from our past. No matter if it was good experiences we had, victorious past, or if we had failures, mistakes and hurt and pain in our past, you can lead us into a new thing. You can lead us into our today and into a brighter future. Father, I ask that you will stand by the brokenhearted right now, that you will bind up their wounds and that you will lead them, O oh God, in your peace, that you will lead them into a good today and a bright future, O oh God. We put our hope and trust in you, knowing that you are working on your people's behalf. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.